again. And this week we've not travelled very far. We're still in Chorley and we've just come out to Rivington, which is about five miles outside of uh, Chorley Town Centre. So not not a long, not a long trip out this week. And uh, we're at the top of Rivington, and uh, behind me is uh, one of the most famous landmarks in the area. It's the Pigeon Tower, and uh, very very popular to be photographed. We're here with a group of photographers from uh, from the club, and uh, they're all chatting away over there. You may be able to hear them in the background. And uh, we're all trying to take a picture of, of, of this tower. So what, what are we trying to do? Well, a lot of people take pictures of this, and it's actually quite tricky because it, it, it stands against the, against the sky, and it's easy to get it all silhouetted. So we're, tr we're, trying, to get, we're trying to get it so that we've got the detail in the tower and some, uh, some detail in the sky, but also trying to frame it in such a way that um, it kind of looks a little bit attractive because it's not easy to get a picture of a tower on its own just on the skyline so you need to get something in the foreground and something in the background so what we've what we've tried to do tonight is I've got a wide angle lens on I'm set to 15 mil at the moment I've got my camera on 15 to 30 and I'm using these two boulders in front of my camera as a little bit of foreground interest on this side I'm using this this track that runs up um, that side there's a bit of a leading line on that side and I've actually got the tower slap bang in the middle of the frame um, it, it may work, it may not work, but also that there's quite a few clouds around and if we, if we can draw those clouds a little bit and get them moving we might get some, some lines that also try to, uh, to kind of bring that focus back to the, the tower itself. Now the sun is setting over there to the west so we're actually shooting south so we're shooting across, across the sunlight so I, because of that I've put a polarizer on the front and the polarizer is going to hopefully give me a little bit more contrast in the sky so draw out some of those clouds a little bit more make the sky a little bit bluer where it needs to be and I'm also playing with a new density filter now tonight it's not it's not very windy but there is quite a lot of fairly fine grass around and some trees in the background and one of the problems with uh, with a neutral density filter when you when you get into a, a ten stop like this is and you get into 20 second exposure even the slightest bit of wind is going to blow all that stuff around and it's going to make it look pretty blurry um, and the trees in the background as well if they if they move in the wind not that there's much wind around but there is a, a slight breeze it can make your picture look a bit blurry so we're going to try and and, and do it with a 10 stop but I might just whip it off and, uh, and show you the difference between uh, having the neutral density filter on there and one without so camera settings as I said before I'm shooting at, uh, at 15 mil and uh, I'm also shooting at f20 because I really want to get this this boulder here nice and sharp as well as everything right through to the horizon so really really high depth of field on this one um, ISO 64 as low as it can go natively and then uh, my shutter speed at that is, is about 20 seconds so let's take the picture and see what it looks like now first thing we need to do of course is, is flick our little our little doobie across so that we don't uh, we don't get any light going in the uh, in, in the eyepiece and that picture is taking while that's taking uh, at 20 seconds I'm just going to show you the picture that uh, that's not got the uh, the new density filter on and you'll see from this picture that all of the, the grass is nice and sharp, it's, it's not moving very much uh, because the, the, it was the nice fast shutter speed. That's now finished, let's, let's have a look at the one with the neutral density filter. And you can see here straight away that you've, we've got that movement in the grass, it looks a little bit blurry, it doesn't look, doesn't look quite as good. Now, some people might, might take those two images and merge them together and use the sky from one and the, and the grass from another, and that's perfectly acceptable. Well, thanks for watching, until next time, see you later. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please leave us some comments down below. There's a button just there as well that you can use to, uh, to subscribe to our channel. And uh, if you want to watch some more videos, try these two because uh, they've, uh, they've been picked from our channel that um, hopefully you'll enjoy those. Um, until next time, thank you very much for watching.